Hello peeps, and welcome back to Mod of Minecraft with Night Dagger, episode 34. Uh, last episode I mentioned that there was a small flaw with my power plant, and that I needed to do something in order to be able to monitor my power levels. Well, that's what we're going to start out with this episode. I am going to do that with the help of a new mod that I have installed. That mod can be found on the Industrial Craft forums, I'll provide a link in the description of this video. It is called Advanced Power Management. Now it adds a bunch of cool stuff including some charging benches, MV, LV, and HV. But the main thing it adds are these, which are storage monitors. It is an electronic circuit, a piece of uninsulated gold cable, some glass, some redstone, and some wood. Easy enough. Let's go ahead and request ourselves 11 regular electronic circuits. And we're going to come over here and we're going to grab three bars of gold, which we are going to use to make uninsulated gold cable. We're also going to need some redstone, which is up here. Let's go ahead and... Did I only request one? Yeah, I must have. Uh, ten. Thank you. Yeah, I only requested one. Huh. So, redstone on the bottom. I've got some glass still in here. So we'll put glass on the sides. Wait for the electronic circuits I ordered to show up. Put those in, not there, put those in the middle. And then we'll come over here to our wood chest and grab ourselves some jungle wood, which we will put down like this. That's going to get us 11 storage monitors. Have an extra gold cable up here that I don't need right now. That's fine. Let's go. Let's also grab ourselves a few signs. Let's go ahead and just grab all the signs we have and let's head out to our power plant. I haven't quite got the IC2 plant done yet. I haven't added the last macerator or the furnaces or anything else can tell this room's changed just a little bit. It has a little alcove back here now. Well, there's a reason for that. I'm actually going to bore out just like this. And then I think we're also going to take these. And we're going to put these storage monitors right here. All right, and let's see. How many do we have on the bottom? Three, four, five, six, seven. Break that out. Let's go ahead and do it like this. And we'll put that back in. <clears throat> and then we're going to put some signs down. This is going to be AESU1. And then this. MFSU1. MFSU2. And so on and so forth. Now I will explain a little bit more about the blocks here in just a minute. While I am typing here, I do have an announcement to make. Later on tonight, hopefully, or possibly tomorrow, uh, nope, I've got two fives now, I am going to be starting a new Let's Play series. There have been a lot of people who have asked me why I don't do multiplayer series anymore. There's also been a lot of people who have asked what server I play on. Oh, I actually need a few more of these indicators. MFSU 10. We're actually going to need 11 and 12. We're going to need two more of these things. Uh, let's just walk around. Just put down the signs for now. 
MFSU 11, MFSU 12, not 13, 12. Well, for those people who have asked why I don't do multiplayer series anymore, it's because I've been too busy with this series and too busy with retail season at work and the whole nine yards. The reason, um, as far as the server I play on, that's never been a big secret. I play on Galt Scorch, which leads me into the announcement. Galt Scourge is having a map reset sometime either tonight or tomorrow. As of the new map, I am going to be doing a Let's Play on Galt Scourge series where I'm going to be playing around with a couple of friends on the Galt Scourge server. Now, there's a major difference between the series that I'm going to be doing, Let's Play on Galt Scourge, and other Minecraft series that you might have seen where it's a multiplayer. Most times you see someone do a series where it's a multiplayer series, they say, oh, Sorry, I know you guys want to play with us, but, you know, it's a private server. It's whitelisted, and we're not taking invitations right now. Screw that. You guys want to play on Galt Scourge? Download the mod pack, jump on. Hey, say hi in the series. You guys are welcome to come join us on Galt Scourge for the series. The only things that I would ask is that you kind of keep in mind that my channel is not totally M-rated. Swearing is fine, the occasional crude joke is fine, but I don't generally make really, really crude jokes. Every once in a while is okay, but, you know. Just please don't say anything in the chat that I'm going to have to feel like I'm going to have to cut out in editing, because I really don't like editing. Um, other than that, just bear in mind the server rules. Make sure you type slash rules when you get on. And... I've been dropping a couple of hints during this series as to exactly what is and what isn't permitted on Gold Scourge, if you guys have been paying attention. This is why. Because I've been planning on doing this series for quite some time. Anyway, now that I've got all those things up, let's get back to this series, shall we? Now, those storage monitors are awesome, but... Actually, you know what, let's go take a look at one of them before we do anything with it. Storage monitors <clears throat> are absolutely awesome things, except for the fact that, well, there's no valid link. We have to do something to link the individual power storage units with these storage monitors. You do that by popping back into the warehouse and crafting yourself some of these energy link cards, which are made with a copper cable, an electronic circuit, and a piece of paper. We need 13 electronic circuits. We need 13 copper cables. And we need 13 pieces of paper. Yep, my system doesn't know how to make paper. That's fine. I have plenty of sugar cane. Paper! Alright, 13 cables, 13 circuits. Put the circuits up there, put the cables up there, that gives us 13 blank energy link cards. What do you do with these, do you think? Well, what you do with these is you come out here, you build yourself a temporary cheater stairway in order to get up here. You hold a card in your hand, you right-click on the storage unit, and you'll notice that card turned blue. It's now an energy link card. Well, you then take this card, you bring it in here, and then this little thing up here in the corner, drop the card in there, and hey, all of a sudden, we have a numeric readout. And look, we even have a nice little GUI. Awesome. Let's go make our other energy link cards. Now the way I want to do this is I'm going to have this side be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, we're going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six. Now 
And then on the other side, starting from this side, we're going to do 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That is going to give us all of our energy link cards. And now we're going to come up here and we're going to put the energy link cards into these storage monitors. You can see here, this is actually storing 10 million and 26 EU. If you're wondering about the 26, that's because every block has the capacity to accept one more pulse past what would allow it to normally be full. So if you have a storage block that is 999999, nine, in other words, it's only got one energy unit left in the storage block, it can still take a full pulse of 32, and it will put that storage block at 10 million and 31. Let's go ahead and drop these storage cards in the rest of these. And you can see my power reserves are pretty well full. Every once in a while that one up there is blinking. This one right here. Every once in a while that one's dropping down just below and then popping back up. I'm not sure what's causing that, but... Actually, wait, yeah, I do know what's causing that. The industrial craft lighting that I have in there is causing that. It's pulsing it. So... You may have noticed the other GUI that's in here, this upper and lower threshold. Well, you can set this thing to emit a redstone signal if it drops below a certain amount of energy. For example, let's say I want this thing to tell me if it drops below 100% energy. Notice it dropped below 100% temporarily and the light turned red. And then it immediately refilled. Well, that allows you to configure a threshold, which I'm going to set to 60% right now on all of these, where it will turn on or off a redstone signal that is being transmitted by the monitor. If the GUI on the front is red, that means it's emitting a redstone signal. If it's green, that means it's not. So as of right now, the only one that's emitting a redstone signal is this storage monitor here, because it's not even close to full yet. What that allows you to do is it allows you to configure certain things to happen when your MFSUs or whatever drop below certain thresholds. You can attach wires to these to pick up those redstone pulses, and then you can have those wires lead into something to say, hey, you know, if... If my storage units are below 60%, I want you to turn on my power generators. Or if my storage units are above 60%, in other words, they are not emitting a redstone signal, I want you to turn on my matter fabricator, or whatever. That's kind of what I'm going to be doing here at some point. Not quite ready for that yet, I don't think. Instead, what I want to start doing this episode, now that I've got a way to monitor my power, is I want to go ahead and... Ooh, I'm missing a brick here. I want to go ahead and start setting up my automatic processing. Now, the way I'm going to do this... Let's just go ahead and get our other furnace and our other macerator in here now. Yeah, I don't want to be messing around with this too much after the, effect, after the fact, so... Let's go ahead and dig this out. And let's dig ourselves a little path to get under here. Head back to the house. We'll build one more furnace and one more macerator. We're also going to need to get four more of those circuits. Or transformers. Those, yeah. So we need four circuits. We need some... 2x insulated, just so happens I have some in here. Oops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8. That's good. You there. Glass just like that. Oops, no. Glass like that. 
electronic circuits. Drop those in there, and four more transformer upgrades. We need an iron furnace. Shouldn't be a big issue. Just break down another one of these furnaces. Combine him with a little iron. Get us our iron furnace. Some redstone there. Let's go ahead and request a standard circuit and an advanced circuit. We're going to need a machine block. We're also going to need some flint, which I think I already have in there. We'll need three diamonds. There's our circuit to get our electric furnace. Uh, there's our machine block with our diamonds our advanced circuits, and our flint gets us our macerator. Grab us a little bit of glass fiber cable. That'll be good. And now we need to start running a logistics system out there. I have some logistics pipes here, and I have a bunch of stone transport pipes, and I still have a bunch of gold transport pipes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sleep through the night first, because it's getting dark. And I'm going to take this diamond chest. Why am I going to take this diamond chest? Well, this diamond chest is going to act as basically the input for our sorting system. Our auto processing system. Now you can see that my industrial craft room is kind of almost lined up with my tower here. I'm actually counting on that. I'm going to pop back down into here. And starting from right here, I'm going to burrow through this wall. And that is going to allow me to break through to access my logistics system from here. Just so happens I have a logistics pipe right there. Looks like it was almost custom built to allow me to do this. In all actuality, it wasn't. It just happened to be a lucky circumstance. Let's bring that out here. And then let us put down our diamond chest right here. On that diamond chest, we're going to need a logistics pipe. We're going to need a Mark One logistics pipe. Logistics chassis Mark One. We're also going to need, what are these, extractor mark twos? Don't need those. I'm going to need some redstone here, a blank module, and then in our plants chest, we need two orange dye, and that is going to make us nothing, because we need an iron chipset. That's going to make us a polymorphic item sink. You've all seen these before. Let's pop back out here. And over to here. Jump back down. We're going to put the logistics chassis mark one on there. Access that. Drop a polymorphic item sink in there. Now this, I'm eventually planning on being an intersection, so I need that to be a logistics pipe. I'm also going to bore a hole up through the floor near the macerators, right here. And then I'm also going to bore a hole in the floor near where the furnaces are going to be, so right here. Let's go ahead and jump back out of here. Get our dirt. And let's tack the last machine on each line. So we'll put a piece of dirt there just to hold this for the moment. We'll put our last furnace right here. We'll put two transformer upgrades in it. We'll do kind of the same thing here. Dirt, macerator, Transformer upgrades. 
drop back down, dig that out, and a little glass fiber there. I don't have any torches on me, do I? Of course not. A uh, little glass fiber there. Alright, so that is going to finish part one of this wonderful thing that we're doing. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to make some Red Power 2 stuff. Now, the easiest way to do this is going to involve the use of a sorting machine. That's going to require me to generate some Blutricity. It's also going to require me to make a fairly complex item. A sorting machine is a filter, some red doped, some blue alloy, and some iron. The filter itself is a piston, two gold, some cobblestone, and some red doped. So, first thing we need is a piston. We're also going to need some of these red dope wafers that I prepared earlier. We're going to need some of this blue alloy that I've been holding on to for ages. We're going to need some iron, which is already in here. And some cobblestone, which I already have in my inventory. So, piston, red doped, uh, gold, and cobblestone. It's going to get us the filter, and then the filter with iron, red doped, and blue alloy is going to get us our sorting machine. We're going to need a way to power the sorting machine. Well, the easiest way to do that is going to be using probably thermopiles. Thermopiles are blue doped, copper, iron, and blue alloy. Do I have any blue dope wafers? I could swear I do. Although I'm not exactly sure where they went. Uh, maybe I don't have any blue dope wafers. I have no blue dope wafers at all. That's weird. I do have some blue electric batteries, though, which I'm going to need. And do I have any blue cable in here? No. Of course not. Why would I have everything I need, huh? I don't even have any... Wool. I have an extra machine block in there for some reason. Okay, well, we're going to have to get ourselves Thankfully I haven't I swear that's going to get me in trouble. I haven't pulled these down yet. So, we can throw in our sand, and our coal, and we can use this to get us some more of these silicon bowls. Silicon bowls plus the nickelite that we have in here. Plus my diamond handsaw. This is going to get us 16 silicon wafers. And then back up to the assembly station, where we will throw our silicon wafers and our nickelite in here. Let's go ahead and cut three more of them down. Toss those in there. We'll just cook up a full stack of them. And I'm going to grab four for now. We're going to need more than that eventually, because we're probably going to want Actually, you know what? I'm just going to grab six. I'm going to want three thermopiles, I think. There we go. Let's go back to the warehouse. <clears throat> Do I have any wool in any of these chests whatsoever? A bunch of ruby dust. Nothing in Thomcraft, nothing in Railcraft, nothing in Forestry. Oh, the fertilizer picked up a new texture, I see. Buildcraft's nothing. 
Not that slag. Nothing in tools. I don't like taking the last thing out, but I'm going to have to. Because I am going to need some blue alloy wire. Okay. Let's go ahead and make our three thermopiles. I don't know why the recipes on these mess up, but we need some copper. Let's go ahead and put the copper in here. Gets us our three thermopiles. And then, let's see, what else are we going to want? We're not really going to need another sorting machine. I think we can do everything that we need to do off of a single sorting machine. What we do need to do, however, is get it in place and get it powered. So we are going to need a few bath boxes in order to store power. Uh, is there any wood in any of these? Yes, there is right there. I'm just going to grab three bath boxes. Let's head back into... Actually, let's not head in there yet. I need to go to the nether. Because I need to get a few buckets of lava. Uh, the nether. There we go. This is going to put me someplace I really didn't want to be. Just go to our lava pumping station. Uh, lava station. There we go. Oh yeah, we can actually use the liquid transposer to get these. Awesome. And, wow, that's a lot of tooltips. I can actually get 5,000 EU at 10 EU per tick out of a generator on one of these things. <laughs> Alright. Oh, massive lag from coming back out of the nether. Alright, let's sleep through the night. And let's head... Let's go ahead and grab ourselves some torches, because we're going to need some torches to get, keep that place well lit. I don't want to deal with mobs in my basement. Drop down. And let's tag a torch right there. Put one here for good measure. Okay, the sorting machine we are going to attach onto the side of our chest. Which I'm going to do right like that. Get the dirt back. And fill this back in. May as well keep to the theme. Cobblestone. Okay. Over here we're going to set up our thermopiles. Now I'm going to remove the torches for the moment. The thermopiles, I'm going to set up right in here. Come on. Don't be a pain in the ass. Alright. That'll be good for that. You dig that out anyway. As well as those. And that. And then I guess the third one I'll have sitting right here. Put 
that's going to cause a minor problem there. That's all right, we'll just do that. All right, the way a thermopile works is it needs to have lava on one side, just like this, and then you need to have the thermopile set on top of that. So we'll do that, that, and that, and then we'll break out these blocks here that we just covered on, and then these blocks here all need to be water, because a thermopile generates power based off of a, temper a temperature differential. So the more extreme the temperatures between the different sides, the more power a thermopile will generate. We are going to have our electric batteries, I think, tagged above them. And I haven't quite figured out how I want to get the power up yet, but I think I might need to make some blue jacketed wire. Let's head into my thaumatorium, which I have not torn down yet. We'll head back to the warehouse. In the warehouse, we'll grab eight covers. And if you put eight covers with some blue alloy in the middle, you get stone jacketed blue wire, which works pretty much the same as the jacketed red wire. No, I don't need the magenta insulated. I'm going to want 16 more covers because I want a few more pieces of this blue wire. But this gives you a freestanding form of blue alloy wire. I might actually not even need this blue alloy wire that I made. I'm going to come down here and using these water buckets that I picked up, I'm going to create an infinite water source right here. And we are going to fill in, no, we're going to fill in the holes around all of these thermopiles. Theoretically, you can use ice instead of water, but good luck keeping ice in ice form. It's just going to turn to liquid form anyway, so I don't really see a point. And we will connect the wires like that. And this is going to start generating a little bit of power for our bat boxes. Now, it's not much. It's not going to generate much power at all. It's only three thermopiles after all. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to put a fourth one in. Which means I need to block those off for the moment. And I need to block that back off. Dig that out, dig that out. Temporary torch. And we'll let these start generating a little bit of power for us. But we need to go back to our base, to our assembly station, get our other blue doped. Let's make ourselves another thermopile. Copper, iron, blue doped, thermopile. Means we're going to need another bucket of lava which means another trip to the lag fest that is my lava station. Pretty soon I need to come up with a decent way to get lava in the overworld. I have something in mind, just haven't gotten around to it. I was actually intending to do it like shortly before I decided to do this entire rebuild, but 
Yeah, then I decided to do the rebuild. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, let's head back down here. Put our lava there. Thermal pile there. No. Dig those out. And, of course... Let's go ahead and dip, dip, and we'll refill these. We'll connect our stone jacketed blue wire to allow this newest thermal pile to transfer energy. And you can see we're getting a little bit of power. And then we're going to actually bring some stone jacket and blue wire over to touch the side of our sorting machine. Now the sorting machine is going to start building up power a lot faster because sorting machines don't have as much internal storage as these bat boxes. But right now, I think I'm going to go back to my warehouse, put some of this crap away, We'll put the other bulls away, we'll put the red wire away. In my tools chest, we'll put our buckets away. And I think what I want to do is I want to grab some of my BT batteries from here, head up to my assembly station where I have all of these power banks, and I think I want to start filling up some BT batteries from my power reserves up here. because the windmill I have up here generates a lot more power than those thermopiles ever will. Six full ones? Yep, that'll work. And... What time is it? It's getting close to dark. Let's go ahead and get this thing powered. And once we have a good charge level built up in here, we shouldn't have to worry about it. I'm pretty sure four thermopiles is going to produce more than enough power. And if it doesn't, we can always come back later and build some more thermopiles. Or possibly put some solars on. Maybe even a windmill on top. That might look cool. Might even just do that. Alright, but we got a decent amount of power. You can see that this thing is now all lit up and pretty, which means it's ready to run. Exactly how we're going to get this to run, we're going to address next episode, because I am out of time for this episode. So, this has been Night Dagger with Let's Play Modded Minecraft, episode 34. In episode 35, we're going to come in here and we're going to turn this ragtag bunch of crap that I've set up this episode into something that's actually going to do something productive for us. So I hope you guys will join me for that, and I will catch you guys next time.